solemnly declare the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the uh, meeting this evening. We have a pretty full agenda. Um, here we have one copy. First of all, um, I just want to make the board aware that Mr. Pettit has not had the occasion to go out and do a report on this. Uh, Mr. Pettit did not have this application in hand until I emailed it to him yesterday for some reason. Um, I visited the site. I know uh, Vice Chairman visited the site properly. Um, is anyone not comfortable listening to this application without Mr. Pettit? It's a pretty straightforward application. And I think. Yes, sir. Uh, Norton, I would normally do a full report on this type of an application, full appearances. The board recalls a couple years back and decided we wouldn't do formal reports. Okay. So, so this is all there might be that. Okay, I, I think it's a pretty straightforward application. Okay, Mr. Berger, what can we do for you, sir? Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Mark, if you raise your right hand, you sound swear that the testimony you're about to give this board tonight is free for an the best of your knowledge. Yes, it is. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate you allowing me to uh, apply. Uh, I've had a porch on the front of my house since I moved in in 1993. 
uh, in the last few years that the courts had started to rot away. Uh, in the last half of the year, it was so bad that I started using our, our whole family started using the rear door of the house to, uh, for safety purposes. Um, I started out just to replace uh, the courts and I decided to make it a little bit larger. Uh, I have a very small house and I use a little extra room to spread out. Um, so I'm seeking a variance. I uh, have a hardship in the fact that I've already built most of this porch. I did stop building it. Um, I did not know that I needed a permit and I had stopped uh, building it and uh, Chris Mecca had uh, instructed me that I would need a variance. Uh, I was told the porch that I built was too large for the current standards. I was told I needed 25 foot clearance to my setback and I have 19. I do have just under 29 foot to the front of my street, so it's slightly different from my setback. Uh, the structure that I have built sticks out no further than uh, both of my neighbor's front steps. Aren't this an enclosed porch? No, no, it isn't. Yeah, I will, I will attest to that. I was there on Saturday and I didn't measure it. Uh, his, his steps did not come out any further than the neighbor to the left or to the right. Um, are you planning on putting a roof over the sir? No, I don't. So pretty much just the structure the way it sits, so that maybe some... Just the railing. Get the uh, permit. Do you plan on putting concrete steps there? Or no, I do not. Leave it as wood. Uh, leave it as wood. Okay. Mark, where, where you're going to... We, we constructed the port, so you taking a measurement to how close far that is from your property line. I'd rather say 19 feet. 19 foot to my, what is my... I'm real familiar with this, but it's listed as my setback on the. Uh, well, it goes to your property. It's, it's actually, if you look at the survey that was submitted, it shows that the existing building is 26.75 feet on the right of way line. The application indicates that the, the depth of the porch is 8 foot 2 inches. At its deepest, yes. So that would give you a, a primary setback of roughly 18.6 feet. So a variance would be 18.6 feet where 25 is required. The setback on that dead end street is not consistent. It's inconsistent, let me put it that One of the houses <coughs> has their entrance on the side of the house. So to be able to determine who was the closest and, and not go any further than that would be almost impossible. The ordinance actually takes that into consideration in the Oregon zone and indicates that in a situation where more than half of the existing homes that come on the street on the same side are less than the required setback. You can build to the as close as the closest home for 10 feet, whichever is great. It's kind of confusing, but I think that basically what that's saying is that all the homes or the homes and associated porches are consistent, it's okay. But in this situation, where it didn't consist that you didn't go any further than the closest to the right away. Well. Or 10 feet, whichever's great. So it's a minimum 10 feet. But this is 18.6. And it's been testified it's consistent with the other homes. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Burns? Anybody have any questions for professionals? Yeah, what was the size of the old porch? It was uh, 10 foot wide by 5 foot deep. The new one's 28 foot, right? Uh, 24 foot wide. Yeah, I think I think the uh, Scott, I think, I think the farm, the house, and everything. I think it's quite situated. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not you know, open. Right. 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 No problem with sidewalk. We 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 Right, that 20, 24 feet, I think that leaves you eight feet on each side, just under eight. So our rule says 14 or a minimum of seven. I agree with 14 or a minimum of seven. So he's okay. Not funny there, is it? Your, your proof of service, Mr. Burns, did you send it out? To yes, I did. I, 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 I give everything to you and I, I posted it into the. Okay, because yeah. I uh, picked your nerdy stuff out of the okay. Courier Post on February 4th. I shared that with the year for so. Thank you. If no one else has any questions, I leave a motion on the floor to approve the application for Mr. Burns. Uh, yes, public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this application, this application only? They can have a motion to close the floor, public portion of the meeting. So we'll move. Second. Okay. Public portion is now closed.
Need a motion on the floor? The approval of Mr. Burns' application? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to name and seconded. The roll call, Jim? Yes. Cabanis? Yes. Yes. Walkerly? Yes. Lucian? Yes. Majowski? Yes. Hanging class? Yes. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, I'd like to talk to uh, Lisa and Michael White, please. This is the use variance, uh, Councilman Mayor, so you, I would request you to reclude yourself at this time. Okay. No, it's residential slash commercial, and he said it to confirm that. So when I had called and spoke with Mr. Matthew, he said, no, this is only commercial. So that was the whole issue because it's like, okay, we can't get rid of this partial residential because, you know, by it being vacant for six months, I was informed that it reverts back to commercial. So this is our, our hardship, um, it's, and it's still vacant. Um, right now, we are still getting, you know, this, Responses asking, well, how much is the house for rent? So, you know, we're getting, you know, responses for residential, but nothing for commercial. Do you guys live in Pennsylvania? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, if you were to rent this <coughs> out, uh, who would be in charge of taking care of the property itself? My second house. A lot of times it's, it's very hard for absentee owners. You know, we, we go by and sometimes the lawns are this high. And, oh, no, know. we have we have uh, maintenance uh, with the uh, lawn service in New Jersey. Okay. Keeps the, keeps the grass covered and keeps the, um, the snow removal. Um, but there are some, you know, 
there, there's a rule. Okay. Did I misunderstand your testimony from the previous meeting, that, not testimony, but your informal, that uh, you and your husband were going to occupy the property? No. Did I misunderstand that? Yes. Now, I agree, I, I was there, and I, I think it is pretty much in concert with the, with the rest of the, the neighborhood um, as far as the amount of residential uh, properties versus the commercial properties. Um, the board, the uh, charity and board, the, the board can impose conditions on any use change. So if the board was inclined to make a condition that this would, that a use variance would be granted, subject to not only be used as a single family property, that may eliminate a future buyer coming in and trying to turn it into a duplex or triplex, or if, if the board would be so inclined. You don't have to put a condition on uh, on the variance, but you are in fact. If there, there, if there would be a concern to the board of uh, of its uh, future use of the So my only thought was that uh, you know if, if it's going to turn into a residence, that the uh, the applicant the one that was residing in, and we have an absentee landlord. Well, and I think they gave testimony that they do have a lawn service or some of And then also we have. Um, Person that they're, they're, you know, probably so recently and the whole front wall was dug up. Yeah, yeah guess what happened? There was a, a main water, uh, was was water, 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 yeah. water, 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 Right, right, right. Strange, strange yeah. <laughs> yeah, we intend on once, once the weather gets better to put some grass in. What, what, is, what is the building in the back being used for? The, the buildings in the back. All the way in the back. Those are all in the control in the, in the back. Yeah. Right now, there's, there's nothing. It's, it's all the whole building is vacant. Okay, so there's nothing in there at this point. Right. Right. Are these photos that you showed are all different rooms in the, in the Yes, yeah, in the building. Yes. Yeah, what function is separate? Now, is this is this ready in its present state to be residential, or are you going to need to do some type of pre-construction inside so we can take for for bedroom, so kitchen, and whatnot? We feel at this point it's ready. Is there a kitchen bath? Okay. Already have any bathrooms? Well, it has one full and two halves. Two halves downstairs and one full upstairs. Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? Anyone have any questions for the professionals? John, do you want to go over your list with us? Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, we basically set forth the same thing that Mr. Allen did about the, the reasons that the proofs that have to be put on the record. Um, particularly, what, that the site is particularly suited for the proposed use, and then when the negative that it's not going to cause a substantial detriment. Um, the fact that this site, that the building was previously residential, convert to commercial, so they want to move it back to, to residential, I think, um, goes to the fact that it is suited, you know, for what they're looking to use it for, the fact that you can't run it commercial, and then, you know, the, the negative is just the you feel that there's a substantial detriment to the public good, should the parents be granted. And I also had comments from Chief Diano. Uh, he was out at your property, and uh, he sees no problem regarding public safety. So he's also aware of this application. Would anyone from the public wish to speak on this application? Is application only? Okay. Seeing no one is wishing to speak to the public, I have a motion to close that public portion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a roll call for the approval? Uh, uh, make a, uh, uh, is there a motion on the floor, Mr. Chair? Uh, motion for approval? I'll make a motion for approval. Second. Second. Motion to be made by Mr. Kuchowski, seconded by Mr. Ockley.
great. We wish you all the best. Hope you get, hope you get that uh, filled up quickly. Yes. What will happen is this resolution will be memorialized on March B, and we will send you a copy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have Keith Lighter. Keith Lighter, Keith Please raise your right hand. The testimony you're about to give this for this evening, please uh, swear or affirm that it's free from after you best be honest. Mr. Chair, lady and uh, members of the board, this is an application. It's essentially a bulk variance application to allow Mr. Yanenko, uh, is that what you yeah. um, uh, To construct a uh, Looks like a garage, a 24 by 40 foot garage where our ordinance only allows a maximum of 16 by 24. Um, he's also asking a variance from our height um, ordinance, which uh, sets forth a maximum height of accessory buildings of 12 feet. He's seeking an 18 feet, uh, uh, I'll be permitted to construct a building 18 feet high. He is also appears, because of the height of the building, to have and close second floor, whereas our ordinance does not permit a um, uh, enclosed second floor on the accessory structure. Uh, he is, it appears he's asked for a five foot setback, uh, but I believe, I don't know if he's gonna need a bearing for that. Maybe John, if, 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 I don't know if you read it a little differently, but 30, 395, 6, 8 says that any building over 100 feet where he cannot be placed closer to the side or rear property less than five feet. Yeah, we we have not indicated that. Oh, okay. okay. So um, although I think the applicant had made a request for a a, a rear yard uh, variance of uh, so five feet, I think that looks like it's probably established by our ordinance. The applicant has to show demonstrate to this board. Uh, that relief can be granted without substantial detriment to the existing uh, zoning ordinance. Uh, he has to show that because of the size of the ground, there's an undue hardship. Uh, the, the undue hardship can only refer to the physical the peculiarities or characteristics of the lot. Uh, undue hardship would not include a financial enhancement of the property, it would not include a, a preference to have a larger building, they're not, those are not hardships. The only hardships that the board can, can look at in passing uh, 
uh, a, a, a bulk variance under the statute is that the uh, configuration of the ground almost mandates the, uh, uh, or would prohibit the use and almost mandates the granting of such a variance. So when you're listening to the testimony, we have to be guided by what the statute sets forth and what, what powers they give you to grant such a variance. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. For the record, my name is David Thatcher. I'm with the law firm of Thatcher, Thatcher, Law and Thatcher. Um, I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Joseph Uneco. Uh, Mr. Uneco is here present tonight to my left. Um, just for a matter of record keeping, prior to tonight's meeting, I presented to the board secretary our proofs of publication in the newspaper, <coughs> as well as our proofs of service on the adjacent property owner. So all that should be on file with the board. Um, and that was done in accordance with the uh, statutory requirements and, and the local ordinance. Um, this is the application of Mr. Uneco uh, with respect to property located at 900 Central Avenue. Uh, this property is located at the corner of Central Avenue and 9th Avenue. It's designated on the tax map as Lot 135, Lot 17. The property is zoned uh, residential. And uh, as indicated by the solicitor, this is a request to approve the construction of a detached uh, garage, which would be, uh, as proposed at, uh, by the applicant, to be 24 feet uh, in width by 40 feet in length. Um, the solicitor has also summarized the uh, variances that are requested. Um, one thing I want to clarify that was uh, stated by the solicitor, uh, he indicated that uh, the proposed structure would have a second uh, floor, which is not the case. Uh, the height of the, and that was, uh, the, the solicitor's comments was based on the fact that the height of the building is going to be 18 feet, but that's not for the uh, construction of the second floor. And I'll elicit testimony from Mr. Yudenko with respect to that. Um, Mr. Yudenko, before we start talking about the um, garage itself, I want to talk about the characteristics of the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, what is immediately behind your house? Maybe you move closer. I want to say the comfort in, I think it's now the Fairfield Fair, Fair It's actually the Travel Lodge. Travel Lodge, I'm sorry. It's a hotel. And uh, across from the Travel Lodge is what? It's the Beauty East Coast Beauty Supply. And uh, that's all part of the uh, Runmead Industrial Complex, is that right? Yes. Your property. Um, Butts up right against that? Yes, it does. And what is immediately behind your property? Woods. It's a creek with the right away, I believe, lots of trees. And immediately across from the uh, travel lodge, what is there? It's a huge warehouse. Uh, I think it's East Coast. Uh, beauty supplies over this? Yes. Uh, if I read pre Are you going to identify? Did you mark them? Okay. Yeah, I did. All right. So, Mr. Yanko, let me show you to mark this. I'm kind of mark these wide. Yeah, that's fine. That's wide one. Can you identify this? That's what I said. This is the, to the left is the fence in my backyard. That's the right, the woods behind it. This is just my neighbor's shed. And that's just the creek as well? Yes. Uh, to the right. There's four. And then shows the market identification is wide too. What is this picture of? This is the motel immediately behind my lot. Identify why five, please. The East Coast Beauty Supply. So 
So this is looking caddy corner to the rear of your property, from the corner of your property, correct? Correct. Slide six. The back portion of the warehouse, caddy corner to my property. Of oh, East Coast Food Supply, correct? Correct. And we see there a dumpster, correct? Yes. CVS, the Sweats Building, and the Auto Body are all commercial facilities, correct? Yes. All right, this property uh, that you own, you, you own it, correct? 900? Yes. And who lives there? My wife, myself, and two children. You yeah. occupy this as your personal residence? Yes. Okay. Um, you want to construct this detached garage, right? Yes. For what purpose? store and work on my vehicles. And uh, what kind of vehicles are we talking about? A 79 Firebird, 78 Dodson, 87 Jeep. And uh, what, what kind of, I mean, are these uh, classic vehicles? What, how do you characterize them? I consider them classic. The Firebird and Dodson, my wife and I, she bought the Firebird new. I have the Dodson and the Jeep. I just think the Jeep's are really nice. Uh, for insurance purposes, how could they be insured? They would be under a, what they call it classic if I can provide you that. Okay. And uh, is this, why do you do this? Why do you have these cars? What is, what is the, uh, I guess you don't. Okay. The personal hobby of yours? Yes, it is. Okay. You have those vehicles on your property right now, correct? Yes. And uh, where do you keep them on the property? 
One is to make carport, the other two are covered up with covers. All right, so they're just kind of out in the open at this point in time. And then they are <coughs> not like that. Two of them are anyway, correct? Yes. Um, even though they're covered, they're still somewhat exposed to the weather? Yes. And you said another is uh, enclosed with, or is underneath a carport, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, if this application is granted by the school board, uh, you're going to store those vehicles within the garage, is that correct? Yes. So they would be out of sight? Out of sight. Right. The carport, you have, is there just one existing carport on there? No, there are two. Okay. Now, if this application is granted, what would you propose to do with uh, those carports? We would enable them to donate them. Okay. Um, There was some mention about the solicitor with respect to a second floor on the uh, detached garage. Are you proposing a second floor in this property? No. On this garage, excuse me? No. Why are you requesting the uh, height of 18 feet then? Such that the lift can raise the car to be able to work underneath it. Okay. Um, is, that also, is, that, is that just to work on it? Is that to work on it? Or is that also for storage purposes? Well, it would be both. And um, you need that height then of 18 feet in order to install the lift and raise the vehicle? Yes. Okay. There's no proposed second floor, correct? No second floor. Not going to be any dwelling quarters in the uh, detached garage, correct? No dwelling at all. All right. One of the concerns this board may be, may have, is that you may fix cars for uh, for commercial reasons, or for, for income. Do you have any intent of doing that? I have no intent, nor I'm qualified. Right. And would you be willing to attach that as a condition that you will never operate a business out of their car repair business? I definitely would. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Knight, the property maintenance officer is here tonight uh, as well, correct? Yes. And uh, there is currently a property maintenance violation that you have received from this property, correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, one of the, uh, is one of the purposes with respect to this detached garage to help you clean up your yard with respect to that? Absolutely, yes. That will allow you to have a neater, cleaner yard, is that right? Yes. Less less uh, items in the yard itself? Yes. Okay. You said that you will only work on your vehicles, no one else's, correct? Correct. All right. Let's talk about the garage itself. Um, you're asking that this board grant you uh, approval of a 40 foot by 24 foot in dimension uh, garage, correct? Yes. Why are you asking for, uh, you, you, you agree with me that that's a pretty large structure, right? It absolutely is. And why are you requesting that this one? If I went smaller to 32, it would work, but this extra eight feet would give me room to work around the workbench and move the engines and the transmissions around rather than be cramped. And I also will put patio furniture in the one corner in the front, so it's not out in the weather. So in addition to storage, storage and working on your classic automobiles, it's also going to allow you to storage of personal property, correct? Okay, so my snow thrower if we go in there, we just cover it up. And so things that may be out in the open or exposed to the weather now uh, that are um, just in the yard, you'll be able to store them in this facility, correct? Yes. All right. Um, let's talk about the uh, material that the building's going to be. What, what, uh, what is it going to be constructed of? The, the proposal I made with Chris Mecca was it was going to be six by six posts on eight foot centers with a concrete base under each post. And I have the schematics of the depth we discussed and the diameter. So you get more into the structural construction on this. Oh, it's going to have two eight foot garage doors facing 9th Avenue, a 36 inch regular size entry door on the side facing my house, and a painted metal sign. Exterior is going to be made of metal? Correct. All right. Um, before we get to the exterior's uh, material, I'll show you uh, what's been marked for identification is Y17. Can you identify that for the board? 
That's the side of the garage facing my house. Okay. So in the middle we see a, a, a garage door, is that right? Yes. That would be facing your house and then um, a 36 inch uh, personal access door as well, correct? Yes. All right. And then can you identify Y18? This is the side of the garage facing 9th Avenue with two garage doors. Okay. And that would be the side facing uh, Ninth Avenue, is that correct? Correct. <coughs> now, you said the exterior is going to be metal, correct? Yes. All right, and I'll show you it's identified as Y12, Y12, yeah, we're going to jump that a little there. Uh, Y12, which is a photograph of a garage, correct? Yes, that's what I propose it to look like when finished. Okay. Um, as far as the color is concerned, this appears to be beige in color. Mine's going to be a little lighter. Okay. Um, off white. So this will be an off white beige. Uh, but what we see here is what uh, ultimately what the board can expect to be constructed on your property. Mm -hmm. Yes. Third Avenue, I believe, 
I forget the exact address. And uh, do you know what the uh, what was constructed there? It was a very nice garage, similar to the one I proposed. It is 24 by 32, 12 foot walls. I'm going to show you a, a group of photos here. This is Y13, Y14. Y15 and Y16. Uh, just to kind of speed this up a little bit, are these all photographs of the uh, of the uh, Third Avenue uh, garage that you're referring to? Yes. Okay, that's just one property on Third Avenue. One property on Third Avenue. Just five photos of the same okay. property. Looks like yeah, the, uh, this was approved in December of 2011, memorialized in January of 2012, and permission variances were granted to this applicant over on Third Avenue, 34 West Third Avenue, to construct a, third, a 24 by 32 foot garage with an 18 height. Similar to, um, for, to, to Stuart Classic Cars, uh, condition that there would be no machinery op operated inside the structure. Um, and uh, the, the applicant testified that he was dedicated more to a hobby of clay and restoring uh, and storing classic automobiles. relationship to Blackbird Pike. Mm -hmm. Where is that property where, with the garage that was approved? It's approximately a block from the pike. Okay. Going back to Y12, which was a photograph of the uh, type of uh, 
uh, garage that you propose to build, what does it look like? A fair representation of what your barn would look like, your garage would look like. Um, is, this, is this a photograph of a garage in town? Yes. Where is it? Um, our show. Okay. Is it a residential property? I don't believe so. Okay. I'm not sure. I took a photograph of it because I thought it was better than taking one off the internet, which I did all of mine off of people <coughs> in the buildings. Okay. But that is, in fact, uh, what, it's a fair representation of what your building would look like. Just about exact. I'm not mine will run up and down. I like that look better than sideways, like the other guy made his. Okay. Um, and you've seen the uh, report of the engineer, correct? Yes. And, uh, there were several, several comments uh, that he uh, had in there. Uh, one was to um, <clears throat> provide the necessary information with regard to the zoning, uh, the missing zoning information, you're willing to provide that, correct? Yes. And uh, uh, he also recommends as a conditional approval that the RV be clean to the satisfaction of the, the he says borough zoning officer, but I think he means property maintenance officer. You're willing to do that, correct? Yes. In fact, you're already, you've been in communication with uh, Officer Knight since the violation, notice the violation was received, correct? Yes. Okay. And the other comments you've already addressed, I believe. So that's that's the extent of our presentation. Thank you, Mr. Batcher. Thank you, Mr. Nico. Mr. Pettit, I'd like to go over your responses, please. I just did. You're, you're, and you went through, went through everything? We had, we had four comments. One was to clarify the zoning information, which they provided testimony. The second was with the excessive amounts of debris, So we're going to have the same. We're looking to have a single driveway out yeah. on the ninth, and then because I think you testified that there'd be two garage doors. Correct. Yeah. I, I, want, I wanted a single to lock. The concrete guy told me it would have to be a double. He wow. told me there, the 22 feet wasn't enough distance to flare. If he's wrong, I hope you're right. He told me it would have to be the full width because of only why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you push the garage back into the lot further? The way it drops. I would have liked it back further because the way the contour goes mm -hmm. down, it comes from both sides. It would really be. You're going to have to deal with, with the borough to get a run up permit for the driveway. Oh, I understand that. You know, you ought to, you ought to address it at that point. Um, and then we asked about information on the exterior finish. I would note for the board that the proposed size of the uh, garage, 24 by 40, the, the house, the existing house, is 25 by 25. So it's almost the size of the existing well line that's out there today. So. John, do you know, is this encroaching on any wetlands at all because of the stream that goes along the back of this property? There was no information submitted, um, whether, you know, on the wetlands. Uh, we could make that a condition of approval that Did you check that, Mr. Patrick? Did I check it now? I mean, I would be, I would check the geo, geo website and confirm that. Did we, didn't, didn't we require the previous applicant to give us a letter of interpretation? Whether that is what we have presence, absence determination from the EP. Um, typically, what, what we do is we'll, we'll look at the geo web that shows what ones within the area, and then we can ask for that, that secondary step. Usually, if, if there's nothing on the geo web, you're, you're okay. It's still up to the applicant, though. If he violates wetlands, it, it's on him. Um, this board has really no jurisdiction with respect to wetlands. It's determined by DEP. All the permits are issued by DEP. Um, but we can ask for the initial step if the if the board were wanted to make a condition if there were wetlands that showed up on, G, on the geo web that they get a presence absence determination for, for the footprint where they're looking to get this. And also, um, I don't know whether you're aware of this, but it's not within the purview of this board to grant a curb cut, and uh, that was to go before mayor and council, and there was also I have comments from uh, Chief Diano, um, and he is writing, I can read it verbatim, um, the plan 
to indicate where the entrance post rods will be located and will a new one be installed. Um, he's concerned about um, the heavy traffic on 9th Avenue and vehicles backing out onto 9th Avenue because there's a lot of, of trucks. So he is concerned that they, that may pose a safety problem in the borough. Well, as we indicated, uh, Mr. Yenko is willing to uh, go with whichever uh, idea that the board approves as far as access to the route, whether it's off of 9th Avenue from the existing driveway. And uh, no, Central, I'm sorry, Central Avenue, my streets, switch around here. This board wants off access off of Central to extend the existing driveway, uh, then we'll come out of that. Whoever the board prefers. I have a question. Are the trees? In that area that you need to clear? No. Oh, I take that back. I don't need to clear it. I have one oak tree. It's fairly small, and I'm going to have to say goodbye to it. Are there any amendments to the surface itself that you're going to have to alter in any way in order for the building to sit in a level ground? It's approximately, I think it's 12 inches is going to have to be shifted from the front left corner to the back right. It's minor, very minor change. And it's going to be in that concrete base? Eventually, yes. Eventually. Well, <coughs> yes, eventually. The survey that they referred to when you were giving the presentation about this nine foot drop across the lot, if you look at the contour of the, of the corner closest to the intersection of Central and Ninth, compared to the far corner, there's a two and a half foot drop. So where, I don't know where you're getting a 12 inch dimension from. Well, I didn't remember the amount. I just remember him saying it was minimal what had to be shifted to level. It looks to me, John, that from the corner of the proposed garage, it's 95 feet. Well, that's 95 concrete. And if you look at the far corner, that's between the 93 and the 92 concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's two and a half feet, you know, within the, the, the so we have that, right? That would be two and a half feet. I think what he was uh, saying was that they're going to have to take take all this down there and put all this on the other end. Are you going to try to a hole? Yeah, cut the hole. That's the word. That's a good point. side, the garage doors on the house side, 
and the entry door on the Ninth Avenue side. And I'm hoping for the curb cut. If I think one way, when, one way around, one way to deal with cars backing on the Ninth is just have a, a, a turn. That's so a good turn. Turn garage, and, and you have part of the driveway goes towards Central. So you can back out turns in case I mean, yeah. Can we truthfully say that Ninth Avenue has been dedicated to the borough and it's not under the Richards Group for snow plowing, et cetera? I believe Ninth that Avenue is too dedicated. Is it is dedicated? Do we do the maintenance one? I, mean, yeah. I believe that's our responsibility. Okay. I think we ought to get an interpretation on that first, too. I guess, Mr. Knight, if you're here, you're very good with the property. Could you perhaps enlighten the board on the history of this property for us, please? Certainly. Uh, my primary concerns are with the exterior of the property. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Uneco has not been in compliance with the Borough Property Maintenance Code since September 24th of 2007, when I originally cited him. Uh, the exterior of his property contains what arguably can de be described as debris or storage. Uh, he's indicated, from what I understand here, that the primary purpose of this garage is to store motor vehicles and to repair the same vehicles for antique purposes. A uh, large majority of the storage or debris that is in uh, Mr. Uneco's uh, yard doesn't appear to be auto-related. So my concern is, uh, we have to ask them, is, is the salvaging or scrapping of the material in there being used to supplement an income or being operated as a business? And is that the purpose of the garage? Uh, the time frame that I've allowed him, because he's been in, in court in numerous times, is to hopefully construct this garage to put some of the storage in here, into the garage. But he's giving me testimony now that, that the primary purpose is for the vehicles. Right. Yeah, that's where we kind of have the contradiction. Um, we were told by Mr. Knight that he gave you an abatement on the debris in your backyard, which I did go over and look at on Saturday um, until you either got approval or were not from this board. And it sounds like you're not intending to do that while you're going to the carpet garage. It's going to be a transitional thing. I originally wanted to build this garage before, but with my wife's injury, it turned the situation around, put the garage and everything because of half the income on hold. So right now it's the transition phase of trying to balance my life between building the garage, which I'm kind of happy I've gotten pushed into doing it, so it's like, that's what its main purpose is to be, is to store the parts. On the interim, I mean, you were over there Saturday, there's been great improvement, uh, steadily progress. I mean, it was, I will say, it was totally out of hand, as Mr. Knight can tell you. But it has been steady progress. And I think this will enable you to do more work faster rather than working out in the elements all the time, trying to do anything. And why is it that you can't accomplish that in a 16 by 24 garage? It would not store them, and I couldn't work in it. And how many of those cars are registered legally right now? All of them. Mm -hmm. I, I visited the site today. I, I have said I could not gain access from the front driveway. So I had to beat through the fences on the side. And my observation is there wasn't an eight foot square area inside of there that wasn't stacked four foot high with something or other. I don't know what it is. So is some of the stuff that's back there, is that materials that you purchased for the, for the purpose of building this garage? Some of the materials are for building the garage. There are some sort of shelving units there. Uh, yes, and looking through the fence, I can see how you saw it, because it is mostly on the perimeter, on the two perimeters, the back and the Ninth Avenue side. So, so if, just, just to clarify, if, if the, if this board approved
approve your, your request to build this garage? A lot of the materials are going to go either to construct the building or inside the building, correct? Yes. Okay. You are willing to make it a condition of the approval that the backyard will be cleaned up as yes. part, of, part of the process? Condition of Anyone else? What was the original non-compliance date? September 24th of 2007 when it was originally cited. And there haven't been any improvements since? He's made uh, somewhat improvements over the course, uh, just to give you the history of it. When I originally cited him, the complaint was never fully evaded because subsequent reinspections, although it uh, revealed that there was some progress on his part, Unfortunately, sometimes, let's say, that the, uh, the areas that were vacated were again replenished with the storage and debris, which resulted in Mr. Ganeko coming back to court. So what is this debris? Is this metal? It's, it's all sorts of uh, product. You want to sure. that here? Please. Well, I pass that around. Here's the file with the photographs with the specific states. The, the last reinspection I performed, I believe, was June 11th, 2012, with the photographs attached to that. There's a descriptive narrative on my uh, reinspection. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Do you intend to build a garage yourself? My cousin's going to help me. I could never do it myself. Okay. It seems like you have a lot of projects. Well, as I said, I got pushed into this because working retail at Macy's, my hours didn't allow a part-time job. Now, luckily, things have calm down in some ways where some of my relatives have realized they can help me out in building this thing and in the long run I will be hopefully better off. Because I don't like my yard like that. I don't think anyone would. Well, there is improvement. I mean, there's no improvement since what you first put your first application in versus this application. There's been no improvement, none whatsoever. Have you removed things? And you knew that's why the board was objecting to because we didn't have enough information. I, I have. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't there when you came over because I would admit the driveway is blocked with. Each of the vehicles. The vehicles are in, 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 in plywood with rocks on the foot of the plywood, so it don't go away. Mm, I don't believe there's rocks. But there is plywood on top but of the There's stone. Side. There's yeah. stone or something to hold it in. I probably wouldn't have stopped Mr. Yurneko if you were there. Because that might have prompted a conversation which was unfair to the application. I did drive by, but I didn't look over your fence. Does it look similar to these pictures right now, or is it much clearer? I have not revisited due to the fact that this, the last reinspection in court, where we were discussing this with court, was in June. There's been continuances on the court charges due to the fact to give Mr. Yuneko time to make application here to see what direction he was going with to abate these issues. Because a lot of it looks more than just cars. It looks like this photo is dated, by the way. I asked Mr. Knight what was the most recent photo there, and I think he indicated last, the last photo was taken from June? June 2012. So that's a good seven months ago. Um, I can have him testify uh, that he's removed things since then to the present. Have you? I have. And you were in court this morning, what, three months ago? September, I believe it was. And have you removed additional items since then to the present? I have. I mean, it will have to be removed in order for me to construct. 
Well, where would you put it? Not in the not in the of New York. Stack four foot, five foot high. Mr. Beach, you had a question, Peters? Yes, it is. Mr. Knight, you said this was continuing? That's correct. the court? Yes, sir. Has, has uh, Mr. Young put that with any fines in that? Not until there's a trial, either he will either enter a guilty plea or not guilty plea. I've allowed a postponement until such time with a decision by this board to see what they get. Well, it's been since 2007, which is certainly adequate time. My, again, my concern is the, the disposition of his exterior property to get this material removed and get his yard into compliance with borough codes. Which Unfortunately, it doesn't meet the criteria for the hardship for the statute of hardship. And I understand what you're trying to do in, in some ways, but like Mr. Ryan said, we, we have to go by you know, the, the statute. Does <coughs> anybody need Mr. Ryan to read that again? Everybody clear on that? Say again. Everybody clear on the statute of hardship, what constitutes hardship? Yeah. Do you need the criteria for it? The board can also consider that there's that the board has approved a similar structure in, in, in treating a uh, uh, an application more favorably. Also, however, that I don't know. We have a resolution that that was a smaller building that was 24, uh, 24 by 32. I don't know what the circumstances were here, but they did. Uh, they, they did. Uh, the board did uh, grant that. Although I, I believe. There was exceptions that no machinery was allowed in there in, in that particular unit. But also in that, but in that unit that was approved, one of the uh, uh, the testimony from the applicant was that he wanted to store vehicles. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. That was part of the uh, you know one, Just, one part of the application. Which is identical to this applicant's testimony. Um, I have a question for you. I mean, can you take consideration of his property? Yes, you can. You can make a condition that he has to be in full compliance with that any municipal maintenance codes uh, before a building permit would be issued. I mean, you, that could be a condition. You can you can just put as many conditions as you want on on approval. Okay, it's not just limited to one. Uh, it would be at least condition upon. I believe the applicant testified he would comply with all the the items in uh, John's review letter dated February eighth. He can make it and to confirm that it's, there's no wetland effect on the property. You can make a condition upon being in full compliance and that all violation, maintenance code violations are, are satisfied. And we, in fact, we'll, we'll even agree to put the time limit on that. It's to the cleanup as well as the construction. I understand that this board doesn't want an open-ended uh, approval that uh, you know the building takes five years to build. I understand based upon the past history with the property maintenance violation, we can put time limits on it today that will, um, obviously, if it's not accomplished, then the approval expires. Um, and then obviously as well, I mean, the property maintenance issue is a separate issue that uh, Mr. Neck will have to deal with Mr. Knight in court. Yeah, we're going to put time limits on that cleanup uh, as well as the construction. And be more guided too, that this building is a little larger than the one we formally approved. What would be the time limits you'd be interested in? How long do you think it would take to clean it up and build the storm? I haven't talked to the applicant about that. Do you have any idea? And then what would you do if he didn't finish it? That, that's a concern. It's not that we have a, a performance bond here. If he starts... Well, I've, also, I, I've indicated that if, if it wasn't completed, then the approval <coughs> would, would, would last. Would expire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but he, Mr. Erwin, he doesn't he start the building so we, and five years from now the building's not done. Can we precondition, can we make a precondition that the yard be cleaned up? Absolutely. As a condition of the approval. To the satisfaction of the construction code department? Absolutely. You can make that to meet, the, the to meet the code before he applies for a building. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Echo, when you were when you were here before back in in the fall, you had the same size of building. Yes. Did you look into seeing if you could reduce the size? Because I thought it was the board's opinion at the time that they thought that the was excessive in size. Did, did you look to see, you know, 
the way you, how many, how many cars you have in that building, you know, you can reduce it? I could go to the 32 feet. I actually had a tour of this other gentleman's. You invited me inside to see it? No. 32 would work. But 40 would be more uh, uh, workable. Go ahead. He strictly has cars on all three cars at the same time? Are you going to be working on all three cars at the same time? I would concentrate on one at a time, but if they're all in out of the weather, you can, if you're in the middle of one motor, you can do two things, two at once. I, I would, you know, like, one area, for the four spots, car, 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 work area in the front of I wouldn't want to box them all in, so it would be hard to work around. Your preference is for it to be 40 feet in length, correct? I do prefer 40 feet. The board's not inclined to grant the size of the building. Uh, you're willing to reduce it to 32 feet, correct? I, yes, I do. Which is consistent with what this board approved uh, a little over a year ago, correct? Yes. Mr. Yandeka, when was the last time you worked on any of these cars? With the cleanup, I haven't had time. So I mean, I've been focusing more on the cleanup. How long would you say it's been since you've actually done work on any of these? Well, I've changed my oil, um, put brakes on. How long ago was that? Uh, well, I've changed my oil uh, to November, right before Thanksgiving. I, I think she's asking you the cars that are covered. The cars that are covered, that you're intending to work on. When's the last time you actually did work on any of those cars? Oh, it's probably been six years. I don't have a place to work on them. I always planned on building a garage, but I, you know, other things were there. Assuming that the board were to grant the approval and Mr. Neko agreed to clean up the yard before he got a building permit, what kind of condition could the board impose to make sure it doesn't become a you know, more degraded, you know, once he gets a building permit. Well, a residential piece of it would good require a bond. Yeah. It would just be, if it would go back out there, you'd have to be be it again. Yeah, yeah, you have to be the yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing I think is worth to consider, although yeah. Mr. Yannick has said he's been trying to lay six years, if somebody brought us, you know, what if this project, the building garage takes six years? Now, it might not be fair to the neighbors to have a half-built garage. How I think he indicated him and his brother are going to do it, your cousin? It, the garage will be built if I am granted permission. My question is, if, if it is granted, how long does the building permit last? How, how long is it open? Three years. There's an extension now. There's an extension to three years. And what happens if he doesn't complete within three years? I think three years is basic. I don't think you did three years on the line. I'm not positive, but I think the construction is the right to issue. That's the going permit. Yeah, the going permit, I think, is good for that. For an extension. I guess the question that I think a lot of us have is we're looking at the pictures of how the yard looks now. Yes. You understand that the garage is to put three cars in it. So you take three cars and you put it in the garage. Yard is still a mess. How do we get the yard cleaned up before? You know, you, are you willing to throw all this stuff away, or is this stuff sentimental? It is not sentimental. It is not sentimental. It was accumulated during the time frame when I had to recycle it for the money. Luckily, as I said, I have received assistance now that I'm not going to have to. So, how are you going to get rid of it? How are we going to get rid of it in a timely fashion? Six I, years is a, not a timely fashion. No, it's not. But if you would have saw it, the, well, you did see the pictures at the beginning. It was totally, I hate to use the word ridiculous, but Mr. Knight would probably use the word ridiculous how it was at the beginning. Put it diplomatically, yes. Uh, now it is basically the, the back, the back wall, 
and the ninth Avenue sign. The center is now pretty much what a yard should look like. Is it like that now? The pool is I just have been out since June because we've had continuances on this. I was out on Saturday and I hate to say it, but it was pretty much in disarray. Carport <coughs> falling over. Well, no, the, the one carport I'm dismantling, as I said I would. Yeah. My, my business is uh, towers old. It's more if I would take the fenders off to get out the well, motor. What, what I'm trying to say is that what kind of room would you need in your yard for you to take all this, I don't want to call it debris because to you it's oh, stuff. Okay, here stuff. <laughs> how, how much room do you need to take this stuff and put it in one spot? What I'm saying is could you buy a shed? Say a pod as opposed to buying a, uh, a shed because the shed you can give got forever. The pod, I guess you rent it, so as you completion of the okay. garage, you put it in that. But what we're saying is at the end, when it's all built, there'll be three cars <coughs> parked inside, the yard will be cleaned up. Yes. And there's nothing going to be there. All this and stuff is going to either go away or be inside the garage. Yes. I did sell a lot of the salvage. That was the original intent. And, and that is all gone now. I, it's been gone out, not in. It's all gone. No, it's not all gone. It's 95% of it. It's like 90% gone. Some of the stuff. What about it? I'm going to have to disagree with that. That's what I did do with it. Okay, either that or, or, or for what I was proposing doesn't make sense. If you're going to rent something to put in it, then you're going to junk. Well, that, that's why I want to build the garage and put the cars in it. It'll open up the driveway because it's difficult getting through the I understand, I understand where you're coming from, but I believe the board members want the yard cleaning before you start. And I'm just trying to find out if there's an avenue that you can seek. The beans, now you describe the stuff that is salvage or whatever it is you're selling, then why don't you just call the guy up and say, come and get this. What's it worth? And it goes away. That's like cleaning up the rest of the yard. Sure. 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 But he also testified that some of it was building materials for use in building. Well, then he would have to take that portion. So we're, we're, we're actually the same nature. Okay. Mr. Knight, you have something? Yes, I just want to add, as certainly I would be in favor of a large garage because it would eliminate the situation. But the question that I have, and maybe it's just my interpretation, some of the testimony, I, I'm, it's a bit hazy here, and I would direct it to Mr. Nineco. Are you going to continue in the salvage no. business? Okay. No. So then the purpose of the garage will not be to store salvage. And the reason I'm asking that is because of the, the history of him clearing the area, vacating uh, portions of it, and as I mentioned before, replenishing it. So then, as he indicated, if he's not going to utilize the garage for a secondary purpose, then the, the material that is not affiliated with the auto restoration should be removed. As Mr. Beatrice indicated, quite frankly, he needs to call somebody in and get it all out. It's that simple. Or we can deem that as operating a business. Correct. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Well, 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 Mr. Uneco at times has shown progress. It, we say has not reached the expediency that I was seeking. Does it has been occasionalized? And it regresses. Exactly. And regresses progress. It's, you know, sometimes it's two steps forward, five steps backwards. So, you know, my, my only suggestion here is that if, if it results in a contractor coming in there, someone coming in, scrapping it, the, the, the materials Mr. Patcher indicated, something is related to the construction of the building, 
But as, as the photographs indicate, a lot of it is not related to the building. It is not related to the vehicle restoration. And those are the materials that have to be, quite frankly, vacated as soon as possible. This, this story has evolved from 2007 or to 2013. And like all books, they have an ending, and it has to come, you know, from my standpoint. If there happened to be an emergency situation on that property where the firemen had to gain interest in the rear of the building, I don't think they'd be able to do it. No, there's a life safety issue there, which is impacting upon firefighters, EMS, and police. And, if, and certainly due to condition of the yard, if you get a smoke-filled condition, Obscuring, it's, it's, obscuring yeah. what he has in the yard. I mean, it's a detrimental. Up, it's, you can't put something up that's on the ground if there's ten things above it. It's well, like you said, this building will permit him to place these vehicles that are undercover, uh, whether it's a tarp or a carport. They're going to be housed inside the building. That's going to open up the driveway. Um, and that's going to eliminate these life safety issues. It's going to eliminate this. The storage issues in the backyard. Uh, he's agreed to make a condition approval to remove whatever scrap remains there. Um, he's agreed to uh, get a pod to store the building materials in there until completion of the building. Uh, so he's, you know, he's willing to do what this board has asked to to rectify this problem, both from a property maintenance standpoint as well as the board's concerns. I mean, do you think we have to store any scrap in that garage? In other words, the, he gets rid of the cars, he sells the cars, and now the scraps in the garage, and he sells the scrap. Would he make that condition? Yes. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, sometimes you yeah. scrap yeah. it. Yeah. You can't keep me in the scrap release. Right. Uh, well, it could be a condition that you only use it for the storage and make storage yeah. more yeah. And a worst case scenario, would you not go, you're going to put it in a standard garage. If you don't get this approval, you can put it in a two car garage. That is 16 by 24. No, what his testimony was, if the board's not agreeable to 40 by 24, what he asked for 32 by 24, which is consistent with what I'm the asking if that is not, if every application stands on its own, I'm asking if that is denied, are you going to put up a 16 by 24 garage? That's all on fines. I need some garage. Absolutely. Right, so you're putting up a 16 by 24? It's not my property. I understand that. But I'm just asking you. Yes. You'd be on that, so you'd put two, if I put a small put two cars in that garage. House. I'm sorry? If I put a small garage up, I'd move it to the house. You would, I'm sorry. Have if I put a large garage, garage it would be more convenient to the house and store the cars, because I don't want to store the cars. So you can store the two cars in that garage and get a pod and store the rubbish. I think that would be financially counterproductive. In the long run, no. Because a two-car garage wouldn't work to work in and store. Anybody else? Anyone from the have to ask this question. What you have in the yard now, you're not going to build the thing and then put it back inside of there. No. With all the scrap material there. And I want to protect the cars. You know, I didn't hang on to my wife's original 79 Firebird to see it run away. I mean, it's protected under, it has that breathable cover, but it's not the same as being in a building. There are three cars that's talking about. If the board grants the approval that they're, they're, they're taken around and the condition is, you got to clean up the yard before you get a building permit. What are you going to do with all the material? It has to be gone before I can start construction. What are you going to do with it? Put it in the pot. It's going to be stored. They can store it and gone. What, what, what are you going to be storing in the pot? Only the material that you'd be using for the garage? Yes. Or all the other stuff? No, I wouldn't want to just store stuff. I mean, the stuff's going away. So why not just get rid of it rather than putting it in the pot? I'm not going to put the other materials are going into the pod. I think he's in case he's going to get rid of the remainder of the stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Knight? <coughs> yeah, that's just the thing that I want to clarify again. Certainly, if they gave him a little bit, you approve the large garage, that would be fine. But my concern, even with the large size, if it is granted, 
uh, Mr. Yunako begin, shall we say, not annexing the yard, even he's, he's going to get something, if it's approvable, to full capacity. So that he has to understand that that's the limitations of what he has to put in there. So we don't have the problem growing outside of the garage again. That was my concern with the scrap. But again, he's indicating the primary uses for the vehicles. If he puts material in there, it'll be kept inside. It seems to me that we need to have some mechanism to guarantee what he's got to do and it's done before he does it, before he goes on and tells us. I would make the suggestion after we approve or disapprove or talk about the size of it. First of all, if we look at this way, if, if we ask Mr. Yanko to clean up the garage, okay, uh, get a pot and put it in the materials, maybe save him money to put it in there and then have him come back at that point. That then we can talk about the size of the garage because if he lets us down on this point, then why can we go further with the garage? I agree with just give it a moment, stay a for a moment. And, and, and all due respect, I think that Mr. Knight has to uh, do How long do you think it'll take you to clean your yard up? You know, if it's not cleaned up, I can't go. May I ask you, how do you intend to accomplish it with the outside contractor coming in? Because the amount of material in there, and, I, and again, the reflection on you, but I've seen how you work with your Jeep pickup and you're no. moving in small increments. It, well, it just yeah, doesn't. About all I think. It, it just, to me, doesn't seem realistic. And, and again, right. like I said, I'm continuous into the court issue here, but it's all woven together here. No, I mean whatever whatever action you know you want to take, yeah. certainly you're not you're hurting me, but I want to well Mr. Uneko is in here or is here to try and to get approval for this, to agree to conditions <coughs> to quite frankly terminate these violations that you know with specific time frame. Uh, to reduce the yard to quite simply the vehicles that he intends to store in the garage, the accessories and parts for the vehicles, and the building material to to construct the building that he wants. All the other stuff has to go. I have another question, Mr. Governor. If we bring an improvement, can we have a date that he can come Sunset tomorrow. You can you can you can make a, a condition like that. I think it would that might be better. A better remedy might be is what uh, Mr. Beepers proposed, maybe tabling it for a, a month or even two to see what progress is made. But it's up to the board. It's up to the board. You can condition and say if it's not done, the yeah, I, condition I, it lapses. I'll speak in favor of precondition. Well, I, I tend to agree with Mr. Beatrice that it has to get cleaned up first. Because I, I was thinking the whole time that we could make conditions and all that, but I get very nervous because it's not a commercial property where we can hold them to a performance bond and things like that. So I think it does need to be cleaned up first. I think that the idea that this garage is gonna magically make all this stuff go away is not going to happen. Uh, I'm inclined to allow, uh, I think the garage would be great for his, his cars and things like that. I think it would be, Looking at the property, he backs up to just woods. Uh, even a larger garage, maybe, if the board thought a bigger garage would be more helpful for the three cards, uh, 
cars are inclined to that. But I, I, I was thinking about the conditions, but I, I have to agree. I, I don't think that we can put ourselves out until he's come for, forward first to get the property cleaned up. And we can't make you police this all the time. It's not fair. This guy, you've had to police your yard for six years and it's still in disarray right now. It's still in disarray. Yeah, so you have to agree that. I don't want to believe that you're going to do this. I think, I think the board wants to help you. I think they, they, they think you're going to do all this, but you have to turn yourself into a credible asset. So I think if, if we went this way, we would do both parties a favor. Who willing to pay what and pay the opportunity to clean it up, satisfy the board? And Dave, hey, you're waiving any uh, automatic statutory approval, which I made it. Okay. So we can put this on the agenda. Would you want it on the next agenda, Dave? Let me do that for control purposes. For control? Okay. And then I can, uh, maybe I'll send a uh, status letter. That's fine. This, uh, chair person. I, I think we should also be in contact with, with uh, Mr. Knight also. Sure. An update every, you know, how often. I think when you can decide to come back in from the board, I think it's going to make Before you guys step aside, I just wanted to see if anyone from the public wish to speak on this application, this application only. Okay, I see no one wishing to speak, so. I would close the public portion of the meeting. Application until the March 13th, 2013 meeting. Do have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, sir, we're going to table that until the 13th of March. And Mr. Knight, if you can kindly clear your schedule, you can wind in here. That'd be March 13th. Yes, sir. You have a few minutes before you have to go. Okay. Go ahead. We're just going to go through the sign or the show sure. after we do the end. But we have an informed here. Thank you. Thank you. Because as we propose 
the, um, the addition, it will require our traffic to go across a portion of the VFW property. And the VFW has indicated they don't have a problem with that. We are going to, in exchange, give them a formal easement for access and parking for their social functions, which are at different times normally than the, uh, the traffic at the store. Um, so it's kind of a, a benefit to both of us. Mr. Rowan, the, the current owner of the property, has also previously given to the VFW a small piece of land um, for, their, for their expansion. Uh, when they expanded the VFW, apparently they, when they put their improvements up, they weren't real careful as to where the property line was. And uh, some of their improvements were actually on Mr. Rowan's land. Mr. Rowan, with the consent of my client, gave a pie-shaped piece of that property to the VFW so that they would clear it up. They actually have more room now, and they're able to put their trash enclosure on that, that pie-shaped piece. So it made the VFW property more workable. Um, the, uh, the issue is, is that my client is pretty much out of storage. His, the good news in this bad economy is my client's business is doing very well. Uh, as a result, he needs to expand the storage capacity uh, of, the, uh, of the building. <coughs> the vast majority of the building as is used now is almost all the floor space is, is all for uh, display and sale. That has left him cramped for um, storage of, of the materials. He has, the other good news is he's got a lot of turnover of his products. So he has to keep it in storage to be able to, um, to keep keep inventory on this floor space. Um, we believe that we don't need, and I'll let Mr. Clancy address this, I, we believe that we don't need any uh, easements. <coughs> the current conditions which make the building um, uh, not meet certain setback requirements are existing, have been existing since the building was constructed. And it's not, any, not anything that the addition is going to do that will impact those issues. I'm going to put that in the turn over to Mr. Clancy. Do you want to swear me in for a workshop? No, yeah, it's just it's informal. <laughs> Jim Clancy, um, Professor Ives and your Lance Rivera. What we're looking to do is basically put an addition on the back side, I believe it's 6th Avenue, um, be a two-story addition just for storage, uh, no office space. Um, there is some pre-existing conditions. The parking butts up close to the sidewalk, which is a pre-existing condition. We're not looking to change that. Um, there is some encroachments where I believe we can get cross-access agreements between the VFW and the purchaser. Um, there might be a little restriping we need to do, but for the most part, um, it's a very simple application. There was uh, some confusion on the zoning because when I talked with John, there was a, um, a schedule that didn't agree with the ordinance, and I'll let John discuss that rather than me. If you want to jump in there, John. Yeah, uh, Mr. Clancy pointed out that online there was a schedule of um, limitations or, or zoning information uh, which the commercial zone, the front yard setback, was different than what was actually written in the ordinance. And I spoke with Joyce, and she went back and couldn't find any ordinances that, su that supported the schedule, and I believe that's been updated online. And unfortunately, our plan doesn't that. show that because it happened just before <coughs> it online. And that would affect the setback on the 6th. Right, so right. are you saying you'll comply with the 10th foot? Um, actually, we're, we're asking for the variance for the five because we're trying to get as much space as we can. Um, we know that we don't need the 50% along the road, but we know that the, um, the VFW is closer than that. <coughs> Unfortunately, the, um, the auto place is set back from it, but it faces the Black Horse Pike. So we, we will ask for relief for that just so we can get the additional area to help support the, uh, the appliance store. It's one of those roads um, that's kind of like you don't have a lot of um, frontage, so it's more of a, uh, a side road. So I don't think it would be a detriment to the master plan because you don't have any um, residential that definitely is looking at this. Um, the, uh, the auto dealer faces the Black Horse Pike, obviously. So 
the, this is kind of like they use this behind the auto dealership, it's backing against it, but it will support the, um, the sports center. Uh, traffic flow will still be the same, the parking will still be the same. And yes, there will be some shortage of parking, but I was there tonight and um, there was still plenty of parking. Even with the VFW, I saw a couple guys out there smoking cigarettes. So. Do you know how many spaces you're losing or will be lost as a result of this? I don't remember the count, but I, if I had to take a guess, I'd probably say maybe 10. Ten. I would take a guess. Mm -hmm. I'm a good guesser, though. That's okay. I guess 10, too. So I just have, you're just going to come out a little further than the car line. Yeah, what we're trying to do is stay five feet off the property line and five feet off the roadway. So the, there's there's at least fire access. That was one of the concerns when we were looking at trying to set the plan up. But we also wanted to make sure we could get, you know, a, you know, skid in there and you know lift the equipment up and drop it in there for um, obviously, you know, putting the, uh, the merchandise in. There. Just to clarify. Even though we're losing some parking spaces, we still comply with the ordinance. We're, uh, the required under the ordinance is 25 spaces. We will have 33 plus 6 handicap. But you share those spaces with the VFW. That's correct. Some some of those spaces we share with the VFW, and after our easement uh, cross easement arrangement, we will share all of the rear portion, uh, rear parking space. But there is parking in the front also. Well, like I said, I was there today between 6 and 6.30 trying to play hide and seek for my group here, which I couldn't find, and there was like four or five cars in front of the lot. Where's the current loading area? I think it was all that, by the way. Um, current loading uh, is to the east of the back of the building where it's crosshatched, if you have the site plan with you, it's that curled area. Um, there was one tractor trailer there, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. That I remember seeing. Yeah. Hey, you had a bomb tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? You had a bomb this morning. No. I remember seeing the uh, tractor trailer. Maybe it was disconnected. That's well, that's the other one. The bomb from the truck. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's um, and the trash enclosure was back in that area. Um, there'll, be no, there'll be no loading from six. Uh, the loading now will all be uh, in the rear of the building um, and will be largely blocked from view um, but if, by the addition and by the VFW hall. Uh, there will be obviously be some across Gravel Hill Road directly to where the proposed loading space is, but that's going to be uh, limited. I think, I think the VFW will block that just from its view. Uh, if you look at the, the arrangement, Presently, where it is now, it's blocked by the VFW. With the new addition, you only partially see something if it's there. And I think, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, guys, when you want load in the new area, then you can move it to the area that it is now. So obviously, it wouldn't be seen here. Some of the things that we're willing to do is to have one way access uh, in the back if, if, if your professionals think that that's appropriate. And if also if the professionals think is appropriate, we would only have a, um, a, a either a left or a right turn out of the um, out of the parking lot on on Gravel Hill Road, whichever you think would be more appropriate for the, uh, um, the folks who are living up on that road. Now, how do they currently access that area? They come in primarily <laughs> off of Sixth. Um, pull forward towards pull, the VFW. Pull forward towards the VFW and then back up uh, uh, perpendicular to the building. Okay. And then leave off the gravel road. Are they leave off of the gravel road and turn left? That I don't know. The VFW can't do. I was only out to the site twice. I don't know that. But I could be wrong with that. Did they turn to the pipe after they leave? Yeah. Yeah, they turn on the pipe. So once. That's changed. There would no more longer be access to Long Six Avenue or something. No, no, no. no it was one way. way. Come, come way. in that way, but not going out that way. Come in that way and then out onto. Uh, well, Who's the current one coming in Long Six Avenue? I'm sorry. Is that in the VFW's parking lot? 
Okay. It's a shared parking area. Yeah, but yeah. The, the actual title owner of that is, is uh, the current owner, Rowan. So that wouldn't change? That would that no violation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to move the... We're going to move over. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're going gonna, gonna to have to move the curb cut okay. uh, to accommodate the uh, addition. So right now the curb cut is where the proposed the storage area is? Yeah, pretty close yeah, to that, yes. Okay. okay. What's the building going to look like on 6th Avenue, Jim? Uh, we do have, he said in a, but it has some elevation. elevation. The color scheme should stay the same. Oh, yes, it's too much. We'll be here until 2 o'clock. Here you go. We want something a little larger. Do you need, do you need nine to How tall are you going to be, Jim? Okay. Two, 42 feet. Okay. It's two stories. For two stories, it's a store. You're under 50. Yeah. 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 Flat roof. Flat roof. Oh, it's an A frame? I'm sorry, it's going to be an A frame roof. Say it again? A frame roof. Okay. So no leaks. And you'll be on the stage before car lots and you or just this concrete around. I'm sorry? Space between the uh, car and the We were looking to do concrete. I believe the applicant wanted to try and have a little walkway so that they could get uh, along the back of the uh, car dealer and perpendicular to the back of the pipe if they want to try to squeeze through there. Right. So here's the right. Here's the right. Not that anybody will take it. Here. Well, it'll get rid of it'll get rid of the weeds and stuff. The uh, and the applicant will become the owner of that playground, which is currently under lease to to the township. Uh, <coughs> oh, yeah. I thought you gave that to me. <laughs> if, if that happens, <laughs> this road. Do, do, do you want to maintain it? <laughs> <laughs> it? Doesn't he have I think we do want to maintain it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oil tanks. Yeah. Oil tank. We built that with CDPG money. I believe it or not. I can't remember. I thought I thought he had to clean that. Some other foundations. Well, look at it. I really don't remember. <laughs> yeah. All I remember is. Uh, Do you want it? He got it. He can't take it if they had an oil tank. Maybe. I, no, I, can't, I can't accept that. Yeah. It's better to leave it dead than they have to pay to keep it clean. <laughs> not a big <laughs> what would the second floor be used for? Storage. Uh, elevator or, I mean, is pallets? Or no, it's the pallet 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 going to be all pallet ties, so it's up the floor. So you're going to have a bay door up top on the outside? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> and how, how many employees can that be? Have you done a turning radius this year with different sizes? Basically, the, the move is the same almost. Um, we're not looking to sit there and do like circular turns. It's going to be like pull forward and back in. So we really don't need to do a turning movement. Or I think I come in there with, with a pop, with a truck, a semi coming in there. Would he be able to back into this? Well, once once he makes the turn into in office six and he pulls in, he's going to drive through that access. And all he's doing is backing up, unloading, and then driving forward again. Which is the same new thing he does now. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll try to have to go through the parking area, isn't he? That's he, he, he does that now. Yeah. 
So he's doing the same movement, he's just shifting it. It, it becomes your focus <laughs> part here. Going down business No, no, no. We're gonna re, we're gonna move the parking space. Well, yeah, everything's shifting over. We're so. gonna relocate all of the uh, parking stalls. And what, I, what I'm hoping for is through this workshop is to have John take a look at it, throw his comments at us before we actually go into the full design. Right. Then we can address everything that he wants and present it before the board so we're not throwing things at you, having a long letter, and then wasting a lot of time. I'm sorry? Uh, between 10 o'clock, between 10 and 2. Sorry, if you want to throw any questions at us while you're taking a look at the... Uh, I actually had the same question that Dick has as far as the traffic trailer is getting around that S turn. So you just show the... Okay, you can just, just sort of like sweep in. If, if you wanted to show a turning in, we can do that on the side of the show. Tom, they can only send us up. I'm sorry? Tom, they can only send us up. That was a very good reason to 14 foot trailer. <laughs> Just have a nice little code, so you can follow me. Yeah. Put the leash. Put the leash, Jeff. Whatever color you like the leash to be. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just a question of how the board's feeling about it and rough generalities. You know. My only concern is, is the setback. I, I will tell you, the, the 10 feet is such a small setback as it, as it starts off. You know, and, and you've got the apron right there. And, and I would agree if it was close to the intersection, but since we're pushed further back, and this roadway isn't one of those roadways that has a lot of buildings facing on 6th, mm -hmm. that's why we decided to try and expand on the stores that we really need to maximize. I understand. I just, you know, like I said, it's only I, I know. I it, it, 10 feet is not, you know, a, a lot in, in you know, aesthetically, you know, one of me needs to continue to, to make the place. Well, it's, it's like the VFW is two feet off the property line. It's like it's it's on that. We don't continue to make those mistakes. Is the problem that I would have. Yeah, but you saying the four and a half feet is that critical to the amount of storage in the building? Because you're right, my advocate of this. Well, I can understand they want to get as much as possible. I don't know if it's yeah. right. It's a very extremely crammed in that road on Sixth Avenue too. I'm oh, sorry. It's a very, very high cram on that road on 6th Avenue. I know. You're going in out of there with a regular, if, if you're coming out of there with a car, if you're not turned, you're going to drive your uh, shroud on. You want to make the insurance company's money, do you? Yeah, well, that guy's going to the body shop there. Right? Well, there you go. It's taking a lot of parking. Well, he used to park parts behind that, behind that uh, yeah. filtering thing. I, I know it's not mine, but what's the board feeling over that five feet? I, I, I hear one, one gentleman who's got a little concern. Is any other members kind of wavering one way or the other? You talk about the setback on that building? Off the of 6th Street. Yeah. The five feet. Do you have a concern about it? I think, I, I think I'd like to go out there. Take, like I said, I got this one Monday evening, so I, I have had an opportunity that. to go out there and actually visit the site. I'd like to go out there and take a look at the site. But how far would you be? Able to move it if, if it was possible to move it. You move it, move it ten feet. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. Jim, it looks we'll, like we'll, we'll do what we have to do, obviously. But uh, so you have some room. Room. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's an honest question. Uh, I'm sorry. It looks like you have some room. You got ten ten point three six feet. We wanted to try and keep the sideline open. So if, if you prefer us to squeeze the sideline and move back, we'd be willing to do that as well. It's, that's why we're here before the board. Um, we thought the sideline was more critical yeah. than the front. Why not maintain the 10 feet and just widen it a little bit and, and get the same square footage? So, so we we want to have to do that, I believe. We have to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is what you be careful. You gotta be careful with separation between buildings though too. Yeah, it's a five hundred separation, <laughs> otherwise you got a twenty half hour firewall. But that's not an issue with block. So that could be easily maintained. So like I said, it's, it's whatever the board feels comfortable with. If you want us to be a foot off the property line, on the property line, I'd say at least six inches off so you don't have an encroachment. Because obviously when you get that close, you're going to have one surveyor saying you're here, you're going to have another surveyor saying you're here. So you're six inches. on that facade too, on that six street side, right? I'm sorry? You're going to have windows on the facade yeah. here. Yeah, not, not, well, on the, not on the uh, storage, right? On the yeah. storage yeah. side, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Have, you want to have windows on that side? Yeah. And that's the side. That's it right here, right? That yeah, 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 that's at the side. Yeah. Six trees. Oh, okay. Well, that's six trees, not the side road, though. Yeah. Side road would be straight yeah. block. Yeah. We're talking about the six trees. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to get it. But the side road, we could do straight block, so at least looking at the two and a half hour fire rating, so that we could go as close to that property line as you wish us to allow. And I would say, no. I want to be at least six inches off that property line. If you want us to be more, you tell us. But in, in order to, if, if you were to maintain a 10 foot on 6th Avenue, you'd be losing about 280 square feet. Mm -hmm. Which one? Times two, right? Like the side yeah, by times, three times, feet. Times, times two, right? Yeah. Well, First and second floor? All right, I'm just talking footprint. Okay, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you lose 288 square feet, you bump the other side out three to four feet, you make that back up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you still have not, you still have some separation between the buildings. You can exactly. see the sidewalk. So if, if, is but that what the board is kind of to leaning towards? Because we can do well, that. Well, I, I would just put one caution here. I don't know. Uh, Maybe you can press the I don't need an answer tonight. That's a big You can press some green in here or something. something like There's got to be a way. You know, we don't want anybody to con congregate in that space between the two buildings. Yeah, that's you got to take care of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It could be a place to put all kind of junk in there. So maybe we could talk to somebody. Maybe we could put. Mr. We can put a six foot <laughs> fence across there, chain link fence, to stop them from going in and out of there with a lock on it. Yeah. If you want an eight foot high, we could do an eight foot high. I only, I only said it because I know people dump on behind that building there. Mm -hmm. If they get there, they're going to. I know what you're saying, Tony. I had somebody stuff a um, a shirt in my bed plate for my sewage plate. That was fun. Okay. National Park. Uh huh. The land of the free. <laughs> but uh, well, I'm happy that you guys are doing very well. And that you need an additional storage space. It's it's, it's very it's nice. encouraging to know that you guys are doing well. You're going to be in town for a long time. I think you guys have a nice. Business there. I visited a number of times and I think you guys do a good job. That's our plan. I mean, that's my client's plan. He's, he's got long term plans for that site and for this camp. Um, so, what's going on with the parking again? Because, Jim, you know, the one the one fallback of this property has always been to have parking in the front, and how it's just dangerous getting out on the back end of the platform <coughs> bike, just like doing one of these things. You're going to get parking from the VFW. You said you're going to have easements. Well, what, what's going on? And I'll, I'll recap real quickly. First, I'm getting the feeling the board would prefer the 10 foot off of the 6th Street, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and squeeze the sideline so we get the same square place. We're going to lose about 10 spaces by putting this new building in within that area off of 6th Street. That area is shared both by the Sports Center and the BFW. Parking along the Black Horse Pike. My eyes are closed. Yeah, that's if okay. John has a better idea, I'm, I'm all ears. You're, you're not looking to. Have we're not going to change anything. You're not looking to have a new entrance for customers from the, no. the shared yeah. park. No. The other thing we're going to do is shift the entrance. Right. Yeah. right. So the other thing we're really doing, we're adding the building, losing some spaces, and shifting the driveway over on 6th Street. Right. But we still feel we have more than sufficient parking for everything that's going on. Right. So if the board's happy with that, I'd like to turn it over to John, give his comments, and then if everybody's in agreement, we'll come forward with a site plan. You want to ask any questions, Mr. Pettit? I, I've given my comments. I don't have anything else right now. Can you throw us something pretty quick so we can get it designed for the next agenda, John? <laughs> Remember, you're going to be Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. I think, you know, Mr. Capatis and, you know, the 10-foot, I, 
think you can accommodate that and meet the ordinance. That's what I would recommend. Okay. Any, any other concerns? Trash or lighting? Or We're in signage. That, that alley. Signage? I'll call it an alley. I'm sure you that alley way. Got got a pathway. Tony, it's, it's a beautiful pathway. It's got to have light. The uh, trash and trash. We can light that up good for you. Is oh, near yeah. the VFW. Yeah. I, have, I really have to on Gravel Road. We'll light that up good for you. We'll put some wall packs along that whole side so that's bright. So when no, these drive by, they can see it. This yeah. building is just an annex for sports authority, right? Yes, correct. And you're not, and you're not proposing any signage on the door? No. 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 Unless you want to say welcome to Ron Meter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we may need one side yard to be on. No, no, yes, uh, but the other one's less interesting. Right, yeah. Did you try to buy that parking lot? You know, you saw it? Believe me, I, I saw the value in there. He's sitting there looking at the paper. I walked in, he's like. Not Jeff, 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 Jeff. Is it just going to be a, 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 a rough face block, or what, what were you thinking on the outside? Well, on the front end, we're going to give us some aesthetics um, just to uh, help out the, uh, the neighbors that we have that are actually going to look at the building once they do. Um, the side is actually going to be a, a concrete wall. Oh, I mean, and made out of concrete. So I can approach a straight concrete Straight, straight. And then the facade on the 6th Street is going to be uh, um, we need to drive it or uh, stuff on it. Makes sense. Yeah. On the street, it'll look nice. Yes. Do you, do you still have public access from the actual parking area out to the Black Horse Pike? Is there still an area there? Yeah, the okay. We're going to continue that. We're just going to. You're not going to reduce that in there, right? No. Unless the car dealership decides to move this car closer to the building. Do you know what the height of the existing building is? Is that the same? About 30, 35 feet. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to say because they have a, uh, a fake uh, wall the facade out front, and uh, that's probably closer to 35, 40 feet high. One so black to the top of the uh, top of the curb. So it's Maybe a little bit. Just a piece of it. Yeah. Probably close to the eight right? So I guess we're going to be here next meeting, correct, anyway, for Mr. 
Can that go? Yes. So Mark. would you would you mind if we deferred that to next meetings in the, no. because of the time constraints? Sure. Okay. Um, but we did we did talk about something that we thought would be uh, positive for the town. Um, mirroring off of Barrington, we have a few public lots here in town, but they're not marked. If you go into Barrington, like up by Vito's, Vito's Chicharia, uh, a couple of different places, it has like a blue sign with P for parking. I don't think anyone knows they're allowed to park in designated areas, you know what I mean, because they're not, they're not marked. I, I think they might be afraid they're going to get a ticket if they park behind, say, the, the Polish delicatessen, which we deemed public parking. Um, you know, I think it might be a good idea if we put signs up. That's public parking behind right? I, I believe. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know that either. Oh, by the barrel? Just the applicant allowed. Somebody, you, you mentioned a while ago that we're, the, the public was allowed to park back there. They, they, that's what they said. Yeah, right? they said that. So I, mean, I don't know who owns it. But what I'm saying is, if we do have public okay. parking, okay. it would probably be a good idea that we mark it because there's nothing on the northbound side of the pike to park. You know, there's nowhere to park. Well, in the store. Yeah, I went like to that store. Right yes. There. Sorry. It used to be the five and ten. Yeah, that one has come past. Yeah, I know, but did they? I don't. I don't recall him in there. Uh, Rick, uh, they changed an ordinance last year uh, about allowing parking on that one side. Well, I've done with the we weekly had a daycare center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was we put no parking there. I don't I mean, know the other even, even, even you know, I was told they were allowed to park in this lot back here in the borough hall lot. Okay, yeah, so I, but I think people don't realize that they see police cars in there. They might be afraid they're going to get ticketed if they park in there. When you go into Haddonfield, when you go into Barrington, there are signs yeah. that just have a nice little P. It says public parking this way. And I think it would just be a positive thing for the town to, if they have out-of-towners, or even, even frankly, people that live in town, I mean, don't know. you don't know, and if it says, you know, you can't, you got police cars, you got fire trucks, you're afraid to park there, you don't want to get ticketed. So I think it would be a positive thing for, for the public and the businesses if we could identify our, our public parking areas. Um, and I'll, I'll leave that at that and we'll talk about it. We did have a nice workshop meeting on the, on the 15th and we'll talk about that next meeting. Uh, under communications, um, I'm glad Mr. Knight is here. Uh, we received a communication from uh, Mary Casey. Uh, Dear Mr. Knight, I just want you to know how grateful and appreciative I am for all your hard work and having the tree removed from Mr. Anderson's lot. You have truly been a blessing. Thank you again. So thank you for the service to our community. I want to just share that with you. Sometimes you get a lot of negative feedback. Well, oh, and there you go. So, I'm glad you're here to uh, share the positive ones because you certainly deserve them. Uh, so another, beer yeah, another communication, um, zoning ordinance 395 8. We got that from Mr. Farley. Do you have a comment on that, Dave? Yeah, uh, if you make Mr. Brown, yes, reference to the reference area of the communication, the zoning ordinance section 395 8, presidential R3 district. Are you talking about my? Yeah, I'm talking about your communication. Okay, that's the where 395A makes reference to townhouses. Yes. But it also appears in the R3 zone. Yes, so it should be removed from the R3 zone in addition to the 395-8. Well, that, I believe 395-8 it does is the R3 just no, it's not. Oh, it's not? No, it's not. Let me check that. I did, in response to that letter, we did get a letter, or June did, which I got a copy of. Therein there was a cause for another concern. Good night. Good night, Kate. Thank you. Good night. R3, section 395-8, permitted uses, townhouses. No. Okay. Actually, when you go to the R3 zone definition, it's townhouses are also in there. I think I'm not following. R3, the R, what? Well, we have what, uh, three zones, R1, R2, R3. That's correct. I think, let's 
see, I don't think they are permitted in R2 zones. R3. R3, it appears to me that they're permitted under our current ordinance. Well, the purpose of removing this, making reference to this ordinance section yes. is in, it has to be removed from both, so that it removes all doubt. Well, you're, wait, we're, we're going to put this on the agenda for next, the, uh, the Township Committee has asked us to put it on the agenda for discussion. When we send it back, our resolution, the board, whatever you vote on, if you want it stricken from all three, I don't see it in the other two, though, Dick. I only see it in 39.5-8 under the R3 district. That's the only place I see where it says, Townhouses or clustered dwellings are permitted. Do we have a copy of the letter that was sent from Mayor and Council to the board? Yes. The um, this is yeah, over here. Yeah, one. the borough council has requested that I advise you that it's their that it's their opinion that the townhouse style <coughs> development should be prohibited. The council would appreciate you placing that issue on your agenda at your next regular meeting. Thereafter, please forward your recommendations by resolution through the council for the purposes of amending the zoning ordinance and our master plan. So that's the statutory procedure which we're following today. We sent a letter to them saying that we were concerned, if they were concerned about townhouse development under 39, 395-8, if they were concerned, the procedure would be to send us a letter to review it at an open meeting, and then we send our recommendations by way of a resolution back to the township council. But I think if we go in and read the definition in R3, 80 by 100, the lots are delineated. Uh, there's a thing in there about the, about the uh, corner lots. So I'll have two front yards. And in there, it says that ten houses are permitted use. Yes, it does. It does say it's permitted use. Well, in, in R395-8. In, in I'm talking about just the R3 zone, not this. I think that it, what we're hoping is that I think council's intent was for this board to look at the ordinances wherever wherever they would be. If, like you said, if it is in the R three, if it's on three nine five, just come back with an amendment to the uh, master plan, the land use uh, ordinance, and I, I think that, that council would definitely uh, consider what we got. Okay, I thought those. we were only going to act on the request of the solicitor, and. If we act on that, then we leave the R3 zone. No, no, we, I think council's given a, a specific, you guys asked us to look at uh, townhouses, and I think we, we, we felt that it was proper to look at townhouses, and I think our letter states that, and we'd like this board to amend the the, uh, the use of townhouses in the borough of Unabee. Wherever you guys, wherever this board would recommend, a, a complete uh, restriction of them, or uh, whatever whatever the board wants, wants to do, I think that's what our letter said. Yeah, that's right, right. So if you if that's what if you want a general elimination or you want you want to eliminate clustered housing, it's your right. Oh, it's referenced in two places. It's referenced here and it's referenced to the R3 zone. So, so the only thing we're deficient in right now here is making sure it gets removed from the R3 zone. Any zone you any zone that you would want it removed from. I mean typically we have a committee that might and go in. I agree with you. It's the only place that it's permitted now is in the R3 zone. Would we typically, uh, would, would the chairman appoint uh, like a committee to to uh, make an amendment for this ordinance, bring it back to this body? And then so what what happens, to Nick, is at, it has to be scheduled for a, at a public meeting, okay. the discussion. It should, be, it should be published that the board is going to discuss that and make recommendations to the town council regarding recommending changes to the uh, master deed. Mm -hmm. So we have a public meeting, and, and at that just, time... You still have a committee to make a recommendation to the board. No, the, the, the board would, Nick. Yeah, the board. So the board discussed it. The, the board discussed it at a regular meeting. Okay, that's okay. Right. That's been ever, now we make a resolution. That's a recommendation. We send that back to township okay. committee. Then they would do the ordinance, and then you have your readings and, and whatever. But I'm saying, if we have a, a little workshop to get this moving, you know. Well, frankly, Nick, I don't think it's going to. Take a lot to get it moving. Okay. We've yeah. already had the discussion. You think it's now. done? Okay. Well, we've had the discussion at length. I think we all realize that we dodged a bullet with the, the okay. big application. Okay. Yeah. And right. I, I'm, I'm not trying to speak for everyone, but well, I, think I have spoken to everyone. Well, I, I, I agree with Nick's recommendation. There, yeah. There's another thing we can take care of in the R1 and R2. Yeah, we can take Make care of Make corner lots, two front yards, and they'll do away with this sort of patchy that you have all over. 
Or you, can make, you can make a resolution, I mean, you can make a recommendation, any, anything you want. Well, I think it's going to be one thing at a time. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, think, I think we need to get, that's, we talked about, we wanted to get the townhouses off the oh, board before right. somebody else comes in, because if somebody else comes in, makes an application to build to townhouses, town. then we have a pending application and we can't act on it. So we need to do right. this as proactively as we possibly can. I, I would recommend at the next meeting, yes, right. we, we do it um, under old business. Just, just a point of order. No, actually, no, I appreciate so it. I would, June, I would put this on the next meeting, yeah. the agenda, or whatever you can, yeah. 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 whatever we submit it in. Okay. Publish, when you give your regular notice, I would, I know you don't, uh, when the, uh, the notice that you give, you don't list every application, correct? No. All right, but what I would do is notice that the, the board is going to discuss a uh, recommendation to okay. change the master deed. So the public has a right to come out. They can put their, their input. I will fax you what I write in the and meeting. I'll be fine. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> this is why council moves so quickly. I mean, you sent the letter within the next meeting we had. Yeah, we had it back. I got it, had from, it back. Uh, it was meeting. from uh, so we meeting. understood yeah. this was something yeah. that had to be taken. Yeah. Okay. With that, I'd like to open the good and welfare portion of the meeting. Is anyone out in the public that wish to speak on any matter? Please come forward and be heard. See no one. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. Good evening. Good evening. John Schmidt, my city here. Um, thank you for the agendas. You are welcome. Appreciate it. Now, the positive result is negative. I'd ask the various, I guess the various stuff in your way. Um, I'm going to ask the planner, why do you do legal copies? It costs more money. We're going to make the agendas, why don't you go turn them back and run it through the copy machine? That's our, that's our prerogative. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our prerogative. Next. Just yes. Okay, yeah, next. That's our so I have room to write. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, one of your solicitors that watch, watch the video tape. Yes. Um, how does that, who is your solicitor? We, we have the joint solicitation of Carlevier and Rowan. They are our solicitor. What the agreement has been is if Mr. Rowan begins on application, in other words, if you were to come in and your application were to be continued, <coughs> uh, Mr. Rowan would see your application through. If Mr. Carlevier comes in, and he begins an application for Mr. Dickinson to do a subdivision. If his application gets continued, Mr. Carlinier sees his application through. We, we have <coughs> the firm of Carlinier and Rowan as our solicitor. Is, is that normal and is that allowed by, yeah. by law? I, it's I, done in Berlin Township. You serve there. With well, David Carlinier, I can send you a copy of the resolution. Now, outside sir. of Mr. Carlinier's law, is yeah. there any other by places that are points of firm? It's like the borough solicitor, um, even though the borough has the same, it is within the same firm, it specifically appoints an individual as a solicitor of record. Um, when you have a bond council, you would appoint a firm, such as Parker and McKay or Cape Martin staff. Well, that's what we do with Mr. Pettit. Mr. Pettit and Associates is, is our borough engineer. So if Mr. Pettit is not here, then he has one of his underlings come in and serves in, in his capacity. You so it's Pettit & Associates, it's not, it's not necessarily John Pettit, it's Pettit & Associates is awarded the, 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 you know, the borough engineer or the planning board engineer capacity. But he's in the solicitor position, and usually an individual is named. It can be. It can be a firm. I just had a communication. Mr. Kennedy is the appointed solicitor for this borough. I just had a communication from his law firm regarding the council requesting that we review part of the master deed. It's signed by a member of the law firm. Um, is it signed by Leonard Wood? Leonard Wood. Leonard, Leonard what is the solicitor of this borough? Well, then, was it just, oh, just, just changed. Oh, okay, it just changed. No, I apologize. So, so this board, this board, can this board get sued? Who is the solicitor of record? Can Mr. Parlamir and myself? The firm of Parlamir and Rowan. Why would it be advantageous for us to have uh, two men to represent us at first? I have never <coughs> seen it in all the board meetings I've ever gone to. Well, then I'm saying where you would appoint, you would appoint person A, and if they're not here, 
you know, a member yeah, of the firm would fall in. But I've never yeah. seen when you. But I think the chairman made it clear that that if an application, the board doesn't always have applications every month, and, and right, but there doesn't seem to it seems like there's a firm with two people, but there doesn't seem like the board has a solicitor of record. As a matter of fact, the RFP went out and said, who in your law firm is going to represent the borough running me? And I wanted to name two people. And I'm asking if that, that was for engineers. For if that's the lab. That was for engineers and solicitor. I'll defer to for any statements that's allowed. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'd like to direct a question to the chair to the mayor. Yes. Did you just, did the mayor just say, regarding my question, is he ridiculous? I didn't hear. Did I? Yes. None of your business, but I said. I mean, we, I can go back and I can pull this no, tape. No. What's your reason, sir? What, 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 what's your point, sir? I, I think a board member here just called a public question ridiculous. Okay. Well, having said that, again, I said I didn't hear. Do you have another question on the floor? Um, Happy to entertain. And at this sure. point, I have a general idea. I wanted to try to understand. Sure. Okay. That's what I was trying to do. And we call it ridiculous. Shame. Shame on you. Shame on you. Well, I think your question was answered. Right. It was. Was having called ridiculous? There's a certain level. I was. There's a certain level. I was just trying to see whether it was proper or not. Ask a few questions about it. And that's been it. answered several times. It was. Okay. I don't think it's ridiculous. Question. Okay. Especially. Well, thank you very much. Is there anyone else in the public wishing to speak this evening? No, move the public person to meet and be closed. Second? Second. Second. Uh, we have a motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Is there anyone else that may be a little before we adjourn this evening? Um, well, just a quickly, just a, I think that uh, I know it's been a long meeting. Um, council's, uh, council's in the process right now of, of uh, amending the ordinance also to clarify the code enforcement official's role. And one of the things that, that uh, we've had first reading on is to create the code enforcement official would also become the zoning official because we're separating the construction and zoning with the code enforcement and zoning because. Uh, this council feels that those two things go together. And being here this evening <coughs> and, and watching Mr. Knight uh, speak to this board, I can see that I think it's going to be a good decision that he would help us out both on the zoning side and on the code enforcement side. So I hopefully we'll be able to work this out by next month. Yeah, he gave things a little traction. Yes, he does. <laughs> and I, I, I think that uh, it would be a good move. The, the council is looking to um, uh, increase his hours, which was something that was talked about in, in previous years, that there was more, he needed more time to do these things, but also to give the ability to show up at this at these meetings and to help uh, uh, report to council for uh, changes in the zoning ordinance. I think this board has seen that there's little changes that need to be amended in our land use and a lot of our ordinances. And I think Keith would be an, uh, you know an asset to getting that accomplished. Let me ask you this, um, Keith, at, he came to our uh, sign ordinance workshop at my behest as a courtesy. He came here this evening. That might be asked as a courtesy. Um, would Mayor and Council uh, facilitate him being paid to attend every meeting? So, I mean, frankly, one of one of my things was, I mean, I really like having someone from the uh, Code Enforcement Office be present at these meetings because there are questions that, frankly, we're not qualified to answer when it comes to certain rules and regulations. And I, I think having the, the Code official here certainly lends credence to um, what we're well, I think that's what the intent is. If he becomes also our zoning official, you become our, our zoning and code enforcement official. That's the how we're gonna. We're, we're just making a few changes in the in the ordinance, just carving it out of one spot and putting it somewhere else. And um, you know that would be an opportunity, absolutely. If, if this board felt it was necessity that he would show up uh, for things, I think that it's it's a reasonable request. I think there's. There's always financial concerns and things like that. And I don't want to take advantage of his kindness. And of course, if there were not any applications on the docket, we were just going to have a general, you know, quick meeting. I wouldn't ask his presence to be here, but I really feel a lot more comfortable, you know, having these types of discussions when there when there are uh, questions mm -hmm. that address his office shouldn't be here to address them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think it's something that's definitely reasonable. Well, we would certainly appreciate that he could facilitate him being compensated because. Well, he's, 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 well, I have to bring it back to the whole committee. I understand yeah. that. But I mean, he's, he's doing it as a, 
a gesture of kindness, and I don't want to take advantage of it. I understand. I understand. Anything else? Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. 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 Yeah